Hello everyone, this is Raheel, and this video I'm going to be looking at uh, trying to make a tic-tac-toe AI. Uh, basically, I want to make it so that a computer can verse another computer uh, with uh, really good accuracy and very little downtime. And uh, hopefully, I can also get the chance to verse this type of computer uh, and uh, lose every time. So. The goal is for this computer to win flawlessly uh, because tic-tac-toe I thought would be a very simple game uh, to start with. I thought that would be a good way to actually look at how, to, how a computer can play a game. So in this video we're going to be looking at laying down the foundations for this AI to play. Uh, so that includes making the game and making the boards. Uh, and that's the plan at least for now. I haven't coded this beforehand so I'm going to probably make a lot of mistakes. Uh, but you can see all of them so let's just... Uh, Add a little title for now, easiest part. Tic-tac-toe. Just so I don't forget, here's what we need to do. So I want to make a game class so that we can actually uh, group all these functions together. Um, and I want to, inside that class, I want to uh, have a way to display the board. And inside, and in with that board, I also want to display the X uh, numbers and the Y numbers. So basically I want the program to ask the human for input and uh, based on what input they're about to give, show those numbers where appropriate, just like how chess has their um, move knights to A1 or rook to C4, stuff like that. And this is similar to that, I'm just gonna have those numbers on the grid just so it's easy to identify uh, instead of them having to guess at to the indexes of the matrix. Then we'll need a way to place pieces. So that'll just be a reminder. Um, and that'll be for the X's and the O's. And for this one, we're just gonna sh show X's and O's as strings, no, no fancy binary conversion. And also below the game, we're gonna have a R board itself. So we'll wanna make that a matrix. And that's, like a, that's where I'm looking at getting today. Uh, let's see how this goes. So I'll define a game class um, with an init function. So uh, let's see what let's see what we want here. We want our, our board. So self dot board is equal to um, oh whoops. I'll just make it a list comprehension, and uh, it'll be a nested list comprehension. So it'll be like a list of lists, and I think that's a good way to emulate a grid in Python. Uh, very simple way as well. So let's just say um, I for I in range three, so three rows. And then inside those three rows, we want another three columns. So it'll be I for I in range three. So each row can fit three items. And let's just make it none for now because there's nothing on the board. And I think that's actually pretty much it for the init function for now. I don't think there's anything else. Um, right now on display, I'll make the display function. So display uh, board, I guess. Yeah, display board. And just do self. And what I want to take in for arguments is which numbers to display. So, or we'll do numbers equals none. I think that's better. Uh, so to display known numbers at the beginning. Before I code the numbers, let's uh, just write the basic for loop of displaying the board without all the numbers. So let's do row count and then the row and enumerate self dot board. And then we're going to print each column in that row. So for call count and call in enumerate row. So remember list and list. And let's just say print the item. And I just want to see how that goes. It should be printing none, uh, but I believe the none type object isn't printable as a string, or actually I think it is. You just can't concatenate it. So let's instantiate our object. Game is equal to game. And let's just do game dot display board. So that prints out uh, nine rows, which is good. And we want some to print on the same line. Uh, we'll just say end is equals to nothing. Now let's try that again. And now as a spacer between them, we'll just say end equal to this. Let's try that. So now we need to separate the different rows. So let me try using this print statement. 
See how this goes. Between those rows, let's just do uh, some underscores just to block it off. Okay, that is not what I was expecting. Maybe I can fix that with a uh, backslash n. So to print on a new line, let's try that out. All right, that looked like it fixed it, but we're gonna need way more rows. Um, but actually, actually, I don't think we need more rows. We'll just say um, if call is none, and just do our regular print statement. And instead of just call, we'll just do nothing. Just a little space. See how that goes, and all of them should be none, so that works. It looks like we have our board uh, blocked off. Now the reason I put the row counts here, I just wanna see what's the first and the last row line. So we'll just do if row count is equal to zero, so that's the first row, then do not print, um, do not print this. So it's actually, if it does not equal zero. All right, and then I should get rid of the first row. Yeah, all right. And now for the column count, we want it so the last column divider doesn't show. I forgot to put a statement here. Um, we'll print the call and end. It's equal to the divider. One thing we can do is just say elif call count is equal to two, so the last column. That, that shouldn't work because these are two different if statements. So that's why I think, I think we should get rid of this um, ending sort of uh, thing where there's, there's a little spacer there. Instead, what I'd like to do is just say, um, print a spacer. Then if it's not two, then we'll print a divider. Now this should work. Oh my God, what's going on here? Oh, I think it's because we forgot to do the little end thing here. Let's try that. There you go. So now the last column is removed and I'll just add some more underscores over here. So we can actually just do some arithmetic. It'll just be underscore times 10 maybe? I don't know, 10 underscores. We'll just make it a formatted string. And now let's try that out. Oh, I forgot different quotations. There you go. So now that's looking more like a tic-tac-toe board. I think so. Um, in fact, we can even change this to dashes and see that, that that looks much better. Okay, if we were to actually replace uh, none with like X or something, then it should just fill up with X. So now we can display it, but now we need to get the text input. So we'll remove this. First, let's set up our user input. So it'll be X or Y position is equal to input choose Y position. So I'm not gonna add any other error handling uh, besides if they, um, choose something else besides an integer. If they do something out of range, it'll automatically throw an index error and stop the program. Uh, so I'll just leave that for now. Uh, but what I do wanna do is actually put this inside of a function. So we'll just call this the prompt, no arguments there. And when it's choosing the Y position, we want to display the Y side of the board. So it'll be game.displayBoard self numbers. So we want numbers to be equal to uh, Y. Let's start with the top numbers. Sorry everyone, I was just cut off because of my 30 minute timer on my camera. Basically what I have found was that um, I was able to fix it, making sure to specify the ends and saying if it's the first column, then just print three empty spaces just to shift over the um, a board. So you can see that that's the board uh, in the, for the Y position. So I just go down here and just select something. It just moves all over all of the rows and that's just how we get the numbers. So if you liked where I'm going, then uh, be sure to stick around for the next video to uh, get notified of that. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Comment if there's any better methods of doing what I'm doing because I do not know what I am doing. See, I'll see you in the next one.